everyone, it is Hutch again, and uh, this is another in our series of backyard bushcraft. But this is also something that you should be doing out in the field every time that you go out if you're out in cold weather. What we're gonna be looking at today is what we would consider a real emergency winter fire kit. What do I mean by real? Um, a lot of times the stuff that we carry in our fire kits is really more for us to practice with or it's not really set up for cold winter. Remember, in cold weather, we may lose dexterity. One of the big signs of hypothermia is not being able to touch your thumb and your pinky uh, finger together. If you cannot make uh, micro movements like this, you're gonna have to rely on macro movements. What that means is you're not gonna be able to use a super tiny ferro rod if you can't put your hands together. And if you've got all your PJ cubes wrapped up and packed really tight inside of tinfoil or something, don't get me wrong, I love PJ cubes, but you're gonna have a hard time fluffing them up enough in order to get them to catch a spark. So what we would like for you to do is to carry a small kit that can easily fit into a cargo pocket, purse, haversack, whatever you carry. Make sure it's on the top of your bag if you're a hunter or whatever, something you can get to quickly. And the whole point of this kit is that you can tear it open or pull it open if you prefer to use canvas or something. Your knot needs to be able to be pulled open with one pull, okay? A bag like this should be able to be tore open, rip open, cut open, whatever you want. You can just dump this stuff out and you can affect a fire to quickly warm yourself up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the insides of this thing. You should be able to just come, clear an area away. Not a whole lot of thought into it. You should be able to have your bag. Now remember, you're not gonna be able to do things like this. So either be able to rip it open, tear it open, cut it open, bite it open. We don't care. Okay. Dump out the contents. Now if you need to, you can actually lay your bag down to keep things dry. Or if that's a problem for you, you could include a sheet of tin foil in there. Either way, what you've got inside the kit is, you have got a pre-made, pre-pulled together tinder bundle, and then something super fine that'll catch your sparks. Okay. You've got yourself a lighter and a ferro rod. I prefer to use a bright color, so if this gets dropped, especially if you're confused. If you've got hypothermia, hypothermia you're gonna have what's called the umbles, the stumble, the mumble, the grumble, the fumble. So you might drop it, you might be confused, so a bright color makes it a lot easier to see in the snow and the grass. And make sure you take these emergency safeties off. There have been stories where people could not perform the dexterity to light because of that. Now, if it's so cold or for some other reason, you don't get flame from this. Put it somewhere like your pocket to start warming up. And we're gonna switch immediately to our ferro rod. We want a nice big ferro rod that we can get a monkey grip on. Remember macro skills. And we may even want to do one of these numbers to give us more leverage. Okay. Either way, however you do it, you're also gonna have some pitch wood, three pieces. One that you split up to be kind of thin, and then two more ready for burning. So really easily, all you do is you dump all this contents out, macros, really, quick fluff, because it's been in your pocket for a long time, quick fluff. This is much easier than, say, pulling apart a PJ cube or something else like that. Remember, we're gonna pretend that this isn't working. All we're gonna do here is jam that in, get us up close. Get that black off. We now have fire. Get those thin pieces on there. quickly as possible. Nice high resin. Nice big things that we can just hold however we want. 
right, I dumped this right in water, so it's not working as well as it might if it was dry. Now we'll go ahead and feel free to start adding our larger pieces since this is pitch wood. Now it would take absolutely nothing to just start dropping any kind of squaw wood, dry leaves, anything that we can break right on top of this. Make sure not to use anything that is too difficult to process or has an expiration date. Some of these pre-made tinder sources are amazing fire starters, but as they expire, the chemistry within them changes and you're basically carrying styrofoam. Now there are a lot of good pre-made quick fires out on the market, but be careful. For example, this specific product, sometimes it twists to open, but sometimes you have to pull it open. This is a flaw in the production, which they have fixed. But if you can't get this open, then this is useless. Now your kit does not need to be that large, although I do recommend the bigger the Tyndall bundle, the better. I would go somewhere between soft bell size and your head size. What you do need is a kit that's waterproof. This one would not be unless I treated it, but most importantly, a key kit that is readily accessible. This was a kit I was really proud to have in my kids stuff, my Ready Set Adventure Box in my kids classes. But the problem I found was if you followed the directions exactly, once you got it open, it was very difficult, especially with just macro motor skills, to get into the thing. Now, that was simply because of the way the knots were described in the directions. This could be fixed very easily. In a real situation, believe you me, I wouldn't mind cutting into that. But if you can't easily pull open a kit and dump out your tinder sources without digging around, what you have is a really cool fire kit. It might be wonderful for bushcraft, it might be wonderful for practice, but it is not the right kit for a winter or cold weather emergency, or even a decent weather emergency dealing with cold from immersion. Now one thing that is incredibly important, no matter what you put your kit in, make sure that it is waterproof, even under the worst conditions, and make sure that it floats. You could be a hunter that falls in a creek, you could be a hiker, you could be someone who dumps a canoe, whatever it is, remember we are worried about cold and wet. So this needs to be a kit that is waterproof and floats, no matter what your bag is made out of. From the day I learned about PJ Cubes up into my scout projects, the Marine Corps and everything else, I have always and will always taught them. I think they're one of the most reliable and inexpensive fire starters out there. But be extremely careful of how you package them. Because if you have to get in there and use fine motor skills, okay, to get it to where it'll catch a spark, you've got a problem. This is going to be very difficult when you're cold. So however you pack it, however you practice, make sure that you can pull it apart and process it to where it'll catch a spark without using any of your fine motor skills. Remember, in cold weather, macro motor skills are king. Now, as you saw, super easy fire to build, even right in the snow. Um, obviously, you might want to use your bag or your tin foil. It's part of why I prefer to use things, things that are flammable um, and waterproof, such as wax cloth or maybe oil cloth. Um, but use that as part of your fire. You can definitely just start uh, putting any low branches that you can grab. Remember, higher is drier, so don't look for anything dead on the ground that you can burn. It will have absorbed, mo absorbed moisture from the rain and the snow and from the ground. So start looking around. Resinous is best for anything you can break off and just start dropping them on here. The goal is that when you're confused, hurt, unable to use fine motor skills, you can affect a really, really quick fire. And matter of fact, this is absolutely so important to us. Um, make sure you watch our videos on finding pitchwood. But if you live in an area where you cannot get pitchwood, go over to um, my other site, Ready Set Adventure Box, www.readysetadventurebox.com. You pay the shipping and I'll send you some pitchwood for free because, I mean, the mountain where I train is just loaded with it. As you can see, this is gonna burn anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how resinous and hard your wood was. You can absolutely just start dumping stuff on here. But remember, one of the big mistakes we see from beginners is that they often um, overfuel the fire. If you rob this of all of its oxygen, no matter how good your fire starter, it will go out. So this is the time to start warming up, to be patient. I mean, it's so hot right here. I actually need to move away just a little bit for my own comfort. 
Um, I am obviously just in my own backyard, and it's it's just it's a pretty warm Colorado fall day. It's like 28. It's nothing nothing super bad. But on game day, you could be shivering, you could not be thinking clearly, and you could have trouble using your tools. So please set yourself up for success and stay safe out there. Remember, even if you're on your, in your own backyard, there is no such thing as a small adventure. And I hope to run into you with one of these on the adventure trail.